Hi, I'm Brooke. Thanks for joining us online. Sermons, devotions, and links to our live stream will be available through our church app, which is available for both Apple and Android devices from either the Apple or Google Play stores. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram at CT Bittenville and like us on Facebook at Calvary Tabernacle Bittenville. We encourage you to pay your tithes and give online at ctbittenville.com slash give or through our app. But if you need to give a physical offering, you can mail it to P.O. Box 93, Bittenville, Arkansas 72712. Through the week, we would love to connect you through one of our Zoom Bible studies. Check out our social media for more information on when and how you can be a part of them. One thing we take seriously here at Caltab is baptism. And don't let that slip by during the season. If you would like to know more about baptism or arrange a time to be baptized, please contact us here at the church and we would love to connect you with one of our ministers to baptize you in the name of Jesus. Again, thank you for tuning in at this time. We ask that you set aside any distractions and join us in a time of worship.
worship him together, church. Let's worship him together right now, Lord. We worship you. We magnify and exalt your holy name. We're going to worship you in the storm. We're going to worship you, oh God, in the midst of trial. We're going to worship you on the mountaintop and in the valley. You're deserving of our praise and our worship, oh God. We worship you, Jesus.
to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. It feels good in this place today. And I am so very thankful for the presence of the Lord that I truly do feel right now. So good to have all of you who are online having church with CT today. It's our honor to have you and thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching and being a part and having church with us each of these Sundays that we've been together. And um, I thank you for that. There is hope. It's coming. And I can't wait for that day. Um, But we got to continue to uh, remain patient. I know that that's difficult and keep right spirits about us during this time. And we will continue to listen to the counsel and advisement of our government officials and our state officials as to when we'll be able to meet again. So hang in there. They've given us a plan and we're getting near that time. But until then, let's just continue to have a move of God right where we are and to allow God to speak into our hearts, into our spirits. Don't jump off of here just because I'm starting to preach now. Because some of you love the worship and we thank God for that. But I do believe that God has a word for us. So stay tuned, especially you CT folk. Uh, This is your church. Don't go church hopping now. Okay? Stay with us. I love you so very much. God is good. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 32. And we're going to read verse 1 through 6. Exodus 32 verse 1. Through six. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, what's become of him? And Aaron said unto them, All right, break off the the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and he fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a molten calf. He's building an image of false god here. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. I will return to that text here in just a moment. Let me just begin this by saying that there's coming a day where things will be happening in this world as normal. And on that day, the sun will rise, the masses will go to work, jobs will be started, kids will go off to school, 
tests and assignments given out. The laundry will be put in the washer. Dinner will be fixed. Tears and laughter will continue to be expressed. Funerals will be in progress. The maternity ward will be rejoicing over a new birth. Church will be opened and it will open with a powerful song and prayer. Nothing will change from the normal routine life as we hopefully will enjoy again very soon. But on that day, the Lord will look at His appointment book and He will call for Gabriel to come to the throne. And He will say, Gabriel, today is the day. The day. Gabriel, it's time. It's time to deliver the great message to my people. Go get the page trumpet. Announce to the angels to gather at the entrance of the city. We are about to have some guests. Let the angelic choir know we have some more about to join the choir. Some of you who can't sing should be rejoicing about that. Today you play before a host of believers that will hear the sound of your trumpet. So play it good and play it loud and play it clear. Stop all the activities of heaven to await the arrival of the redeemed. And something will happen then when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the morning breaks eternal bright and clear, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called. Oh, when the redeemed are gathered in. The redeemed of God are going to march into a city and see the one who died for them. They will look upon His face and they will worship around His throne. It is going to happen. Every generation of believers has passed down to the next, the hope of mankind. The hope that one of these days we will be raptured out of this world and we'll live eternally with the Lord forever. This story of the rapture must remain vibrant and thrilling to each of us throughout the ages. We must maintain our hold on the truth that has been given to us. I can't begin to guess when He is coming. I will not even pretend to stand before you today and predict when that time will be. No man knows that time. I thought that we would have already seen the rapture, but the Lord's timing is not mine. And it's not yours. Many signs of the end have have taken place. and, And now we await His coming. But rest assured, rest assured, He will come. He will come. He is coming. For some reason, He has delayed His coming. The Scripture talks of this as it reminds us that in the last days there would be scoffers saying in 2 Peter 3, 4, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. But Peter continued writing by saying in 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now please hear me today. Regardless of our theological beliefs and personal opinions, Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the Lords and the King of Kings is coming again to take His people out of this world. It's going to happen. But the problem is the delay. I don't know of anyone that just loves delays. I, 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 I don't like being delayed in traffic, delayed meals, Delayed tax returns. 
delayed stimulus checks. Come on, somebody. Delayed medical care. Delayed flights. We don't like delays. I haven't met a person that was like, I love to wait. I've never met a person who's like calling and saying, you know, I would just love to be put on your waiting list. If you could just put me on your waiting list, you know, that'd just be awesome. No, 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 no. We're only on a waiting list because there's people in front of us. That <laughs> Come on, somebody, help me right now. We don't like to wait. We don't like delays. We don't like that. If we're being honest, I, I was traveling somewhere a few months back when you could still travel. And my flight was a little bit delayed. And so I went, I went just around the corner of the gate. It was kind of a weird layout. That gate, that particular gate was, was, that I was at was tucked in a corner. And so there weren't very many seats. And so it, they were all full. And so I, I, or, or they were just people that, I, you know, were too close and, and there weren't enough seats in between them. It's probably the, the bigger truth. But, but regardless, I, I went around the corner and, I just waited. I put some headphones in and I was listening and, and I was just kind of sitting there against the wall and and all of a sudden it occurs to me, you haven't checked your flight in a while. And so I um, jumped up and I went and sat down and I was like, man, the gate is like super empty right now. And so I'm just sitting there in the gate and I'm like, well, seats opened up. I guess that was the previous flight. And then I look up at the screen only to realize that I missed my flight. They had just shut that gate. And as I ran up there, the lady so very kindly told me, and that's a lie. She was not so very kind, but she told me, you have missed your flight and there's nothing I can do. And I was like, I, I can see the plane. She said, I don't care. You've missed your flight. And I said, yes, ma'am. And I had missed my flight. So I had to go and I had to rebook and all that jazz. And luckily was able to get on the next flight just three hours later. You see, I didn't handle the delay very well. I lost focus. And in our text, it talks of one of the greatest leaders in the history of God's people, Moses, a leader of leaders who served God faithfully as a child and was taught throughout his life the importance of relying on the one true God of Israel. And from the time he was noticed in the bulrushes until the sight of the burning bush, he was in training to be God's leader of deliverance. God used this man to deliver these people of God and help them overcome the bondage of Egypt. We know this story. We've heard it since our childhood. But these people, they had come out of Egypt. They had crossed the Red Sea. They had watched their enemies destroyed. They had been fed manna and quail by the miraculous power of God. Happy meals from heaven, as I like to say it. God gave them water from a rock. Everything they needed was supplied. By the God who loved them and cared for them. And, and now God is giving them something else they need to survive and to continue to walk with Him. God, you see, as we are leading up to our text, had called Moses up into the mountain to listen to the voice of God and receive instructions for Israel. This was fine and wonderful until it got to the point where it seemed as if Moses would not return. And the Bible says that when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down, it's in your text, you can go back and read it. When they saw that Moses delayed to come down, they got impatient. And notice something. Prior to his leaving, God had demonstrated his glory at that mountain by letting them see the lightning and hear the thunder, which let them know God was there. The cloud of glory had hovered around the mountain and was still visible. The Shekinah was in plain sight of all of Israel. They had seen the glory of a God. But Moses delayed his return. And after 30 days of waiting, they got tired of it. And they became disenchanted and wanted a new God to serve. Let's forget all that God had done for them. 
Let's forget all the miracles he had performed in their life leading up to that. They became impatient with the delay. And they said, we need a God now. And they began to create their own God. There was too much delay in the time for them to be happy. Other things occupied their minds. They wanted a God to see visibly. They could not wait on the Lord. In 30 days, they forgot about the Red Sea. They forgot about the manna. They forgot about the the rock that ran with water. They forgot about their enemies being destroyed. They forgot about the miracles of God and the power of God. Good people, during the delay, we must not lose sight of heaven. We cannot get our eyes so focused on everything else and get caught up in God's delay returning for His church that we miss it completely. Rather, we need to prepare for the last and great event to happen in this old world and must at all cost allow God to touch our lives. We cannot Be distracted during the delay. I have a question for each of us today. Will we survive the delay? As we wait longer and longer for His coming, will we get to the point where things don't matter? Where prayer doesn't mean as much? Where the Bible is less important? Where the plan of God is no longer necessary in our life, where our lifestyle is whatever we deem it should be. Where worship for God is diminished and where we grow cold in the waiting. Will we survive the delay? Are we more worried about when our lives can get back to normal? Than we are about being prepared spiritually to meet Jesus face to face. Are we, are we so riled up because we can't come to the physical house of God that we've neglected our personal walk with God? Are we struggling with the delay physically in our life so much that we are becoming encumbered by it and we are missing, we're missing, we're missing the signs of the times at which we are in where God is screaming at us saying, get ready! Because I'm coming back for a bride. I'm coming back for a people. I'm coming back. Oh, it may have been many years since you first heard of His coming. But I want to remind you more than ever today. He's still coming. It may have been when you were a small child that you remember that preacher standing in a pulpit and preaching about the rapture and you felt God's presence for the first time and you felt in your heart of hearts say, I want to go. I want to make it to heaven. I want to be with Jesus for eternity. But I want to just help remind you today, He's still coming back for His bride. He's still coming back. Hear me today. Noah built a boat that would accommodate hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. For 120 years, he and his sons worked. They they slaved. They worked hard. They put their hand to work fulfilling the commandment of God. Then it was time for, for those animals and the people to board the ark, to get aboard that ark. And Noah, his family, and the animals got inside. And hear this. For seven days, seven days, that door remained open. Some people miss that in the Scripture. Some people think that once he built it, God said, that's it, shut it, let's go. No, he left it open for seven days. It remained wide open for anybody else to enter into that ark. Noah built that ark and God, and he had preached that message for people to come in. God, you hear me? God delayed the closing of that door. I wonder how many people got in that boat originally. I wonder if some went inside of that boat, but they got bored and they left because of the delay. How many walked in for a few hours and they looked around and and they sat and they visited for a little bit and some of them said, I can't handle this stench. I'm out of here. 
I can't do this. This is ridiculous. There ain't no rain. There's nothing happening around here. How many walked in for a few hours but couldn't stand the thoughts of being cooped up so they left? They walked out of that ark. I personally think that others may have have entered inside and looked around, but because God delayed that rain, they left. Because God didn't immediately begin to pour rain upon the earth, they left. I've been praying. I've been praying leading up to this service for God to help us today to understand the importance of what is going on around us. I have been praying that during this delay that we are in physically during this pandemic that our hearts would long for heaven. That it would long for heaven that much more. That we would not sit around and say, oh, I just can't wait until we can do this or do that. And we long so much for earthly things that we are not taking this time that we've been given to make sure that our heart's right, our soul's right, that our family is right with God so that we can enter in on that great day of Christ's return. You say, Pastor, you're you're a little fired up today. I am fired up today. God has been dealing with me all week. God has been speaking into my spirit. He's been telling me, wake up. Wake up, Dean. Don't you see what I'm trying to do? Don't you see what I'm trying to speak to the church? And so I'm here as the voice of God to CT family and anybody who's watching and listening to tell you, don't waste this opportunity. Don't waste this window of grace. God has given us, but you better make sure that you and everybody that can go with you is ready for that great day because you hear me. This Word of God promises us that He is coming back for a people. Hallelujah. 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 He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Oh, I've been praying that God would stir us up as a people, as a society to say, during this physical delay, I want to prioritize my spiritual life so that I will not lose sight of heaven. Some, they sit and never make a move towards God and still feel comfortable about it. In the midst of everything that is so chaotic around us, you have not been moved one time to increase your prayer life. To develop a, a consistent walk with God every day. To get rid of some junk and some mess that you've allowed into your heart over the years. Some bitterness and pain and heartache and, and some addictions and things that have been holding you down. You're still holding on to them. You hear this preacher today. It is high time for us to wake up to what is happening in our world today. Wake up to the reality that God is bending over heaven right now. And He's saying, get ready, get ready, get ready because I'm coming and And I'm coming soon for a people who love me more than anything else in this world. We must not be lulled to sleep by the delay. I don't know God's time frame. I'm not here trying to speak and provoke fear into your life. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to try to provoke action in somebody today to make sure that you are where you need to be so that on that great and glorious day where He says, Gabriel, come on. Come on and sound that trumpet. It is time that you are ready. Hallelujah. I don't understand all the whys and hows, but I do understand that God's Spirit is moving in these last days to prepare us. I believe very strongly that we have been given a period of grace, but that window of grace is closing. Our impatience in the delay could cause us to miss so much. And the Bible talks about us being caught up in the atmosphere of the world. Jesus called it the cares of life. These things can get a strong hold in our lives and cause us to miss that next great flight. We can get restless during the waiting. We can become distracted during the waiting. But 
We can even fall asleep and miss out on what God is trying to tell the church right now and even miss the rapture. But during the delay is when we must be ever so watchful. Exodus 32, 1. It says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, make us gods. The delay got them. And let me tell you what happens. I just feel this. This isn't even in my notes. I feel to say this right now in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Even though all the other little idols that we have have been shut down, we'll create new ones. If we don't center our life, if we don't make sure that God is centered in our life, if we don't make sure that during this delay that God is not at the center of everything that we're about, we'll turn to other idols. We'll create other gods. God help us. Exodus 32, 7, 8, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down. For thy people, which thou, which you brought out of Egypt... They've corrupted themselves. They've turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed there and too. And said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. They've corrupted themselves. Sounds like our country. During the delay, we have forgotten and we can easily forget the one true God. He's been removed from our schools. He's been removed from our courthouses and replaced with cares and desires of this flesh. And then we look around and wonder why we're in the mess we're in. Come on, wake up, people. Wake up, people. If there is ever a time where we needed to make sure that we are praying and fasting and being a witness outside of the four walls of a church building, it is right now. It's the only way that we're going to survive this delay is if we're having a relationship with God, if we're making Him the center of it all, if we're hearing His Word speak to us, if we're preparing our hearts. We don't have all the time in the world to get ready. You better hear this preacher. We don't have plenty of time to put off our responsibility to God. We can't afford to wait to get our hearts right with God. We must use this time given us now to worship Him and adore Him. And don't give me this, oh, I can't worship if I'm not with everybody. Then your worship isn't worth very much. If you can't find you a private place of prayer and worship begin to flow out of your heart, then you're way below the blessing God has for you. You need to find you a place and you need to get lost in worship in the middle of this thing. You need to develop the kind of relationship with God where worship flows out of you regardless if there's one or 20 people surrounding your life. We have got to get a hold of what God is wanting to establish in us which is relationship. We must use this time. We have to be available this time for the cause of the kingdom. For in the last day, Paul reminds us in 2 Timothy 3.1, perilous times, they will come. Not maybe, not they might, but perilous times shall come. Perilous times are dangerous. They're troublesome. They're grievous. They're perplexing. They are high risk times. That's what perilous times means. So then he said, seeing that they are coming, I want to tell you before you ever get there, 2 Thessalonians 2.2, 2, see that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled in spirit, nor by word, but know this, the day of Christ is at hand. Financial crisis is upon us. The economy is floundering. Healthcare systems are unstable. Pandemics are spreading along with fear and anxiety. Jobs are being lost. Prices are going up while job security is going down. Uncertainty fills hearts and minds. It, people, is shaking times. It is shaking times. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But the things that cannot be shaken, they shall remain. That's why it's time for the church to stand stronger than we ever have before. It is time for the church to be the kind of people that shine bright in a dark place. We must survive the delay. 
Don't lose your worship. Don't lose your worship. Don't lose your prayer life during the delay. Don't lose your relationship with God during the delay. Don't get shook loose during these times of uncertainty that we are in. God help us. God help us to make sure that we are not becoming so distracted by everything around us that we are missing out on what God's trying to speak to us during this hour of delay. James 5, 7 says, Be patient therefore. Brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. He's coming. You hear me? He's coming. You say, my God, preacher, we're in some dark times. This is hopeless around us, and you're, you're here kind of yelling at us right now about Getting ready. This is kind of heavy. This is kind of dark. No, heaven's not dark. Heaven's a beautiful place. Heaven's a place that God has prepared for those who love Him, who have surrendered to Him, for the redeemed. I'm here to try to awaken us Don't let doubt creep in on what you believe. Don't get to this point in time and say, well, is this necessary or is that necessary? Or do I really need to do this or that to be saved and make it to heaven? This is a bad time for you to be saying those types of things. What we need to be saying is I've got my mind made up. I've got my life on a solid foundation. And while the rest of the world can shake, I'm not going to shake loose from the Word of God, from my relationship with God. I, 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 need, I need to get some things in order so that I can be ready. Good people, we need to ask that question that the people in Acts 2.37 asked after they heard Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. When they heard Peter's sermon, they were cut to their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men, brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to know what they needed to do to be saved. Does anybody still want to know what you've got to do to be saved? Is there anybody listening to me today that's still concerned about being saved? Is there anybody that's watching today that's still concerned about not making heaven? Because I am. And so Peter said unto them when they asked that question, Repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. That's us. That's us. As many as the Lord our God will call. So we've got to repent of our sins and our failures. We need to be baptized in the only saving name of Jesus and be filled with the Spirit John 3, 4 through 6, Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. But that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So we need the Spirit of God in our life. And then we need to live a holy life that's pleasing to God. There are a lot of people that think once I've been baptized and once I've been filled with the Spirit that I'm good. But God requires a holy lifestyle. Continuing every day to serve Him and live out Christ to the world around us. Romans 12.1 I beseech you therefore, brethren... 
by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 1 Peter 2, 5. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So I ask us today, and I've gone a little longer than I had planned, but I ask us today, will we survive the delay? You can, but it's your choice. I can't make you do anything for God. God will not even force His will upon man. You have to decide what you're going to do during the delay. Are you getting caught up in all of the distractions? Or are you preparing yourself for Christ's return? Have we fallen so in love with our lives down here that we have stopped preparing ourselves for a life over there? Oh, hear me. His delay is not His unconcern for us, but rather our opportunity to prepare. It's our seven days with the ark door open for people to come in. So don't miss it. Please don't miss it. I'm begging you. Make a decision today. Because delay, delay is not denial of God. Delay is not even defeat. But it's preparation. So let's prepare. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's study and show ourselves approved unto God. Don't get lazy during the delay. Don't miss it because He's coming. Don't miss it because He's coming. I was talking to my wife. Heather just a couple of days ago and I said you know I wonder I wonder if we've got it so good down here that we no longer long and want for heaven I wonder if we're so blessed I wonder if, if everything's just good enough to where that desire for heaven to be with Jesus forever has waned. So I'm going to ask you right now, I'm going to ask you with me to reconsecrate yourselves. I want to ask you today to join me. And saying to God, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for the things that I've allowed, oh God, to distract me during this delay of your return. I'm sorry for even in the physical delay that we're experiencing for being so encumbered and engrossed in what I don't have or what I'm missing out on that are conveniences in my life. I'm more focused on that than I am making sure that my life is ready. That my heart is ready during this period of time where you have definitely shifted and moved some things around and I believe God's hand is in some of this to get our attention and to let us know we're ever closer we're ever closer so church good people those of you who are watching who are not even affiliated with our church you don't even know us. And you may be thinking this preacher is, man, he's lost it. He's off his rocker. You may be thinking this preacher has lost his mind during this pandemic. He's been alone too long. No, friend, hear me. 
I have been alone with God this week. He has been speaking to me. And I'm going to tell you, he's trying to get our attention. And he's trying to get your attention. Whether you've known him for 30 years or you've known him just a short time or you haven't known him at all. You, you, this is your first time ever even hearing about this. Please hear this preacher. Let's get serious about getting our life ready. Getting it in order. Surrendering everything to this great God of the universe who doesn't desire that anybody should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. Let's turn our attention to Him. Let's open our hearts to Him, even right now. Right now as you're watching, will you lift your hands? Will you surrender your hearts? Will you make that place that you are an altar right now? And will you begin right now to lift up your voice and begin to repent and ask God to forgive you of your sins? Begin to ask God to cleanse you of any unrighteousness. Ask God to remove every distraction. Ask God right now. Come on. He's faithful to forgive us. He's faithful for, to forgive you. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter how far you've drifted. It doesn't matter how messed up your life is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are right now. If you ask God to forgive you, the Bible says He is faithful to forgive you. He forgives you, but you got to ask Him. So open up your heart, open up your mouth, and begin to talk to Him. People who have been in this a long time, church family, I want you to begin to ask God to cleanse you of anything, any distraction, any hindrance, anything that you've allowed your mind to get wrapped up in. And you've lost sight of heaven. You've lost sight of that great and glorious day when He will rapture us out of this world. Oh, we should be saying, I want to go there. That's what I long for. That's what I'm hungry for. That's what I want. But let's pray together. God in heaven, our Father who loves us so much, I pray right now, every person under the sound of my voice, every person that is watching today, I pray God that you have begun, Lord, by your spirit to move upon every person that is listening every person that is watching and I pray God let it begin to stir in us again a hunger for heaven a hunger oh God for that great and glorious day where we will spend forever with you I pray oh Lord let that desire get a hold of us more than any other desire in our life let us oh God not lose sight of that great day let us not lose sight oh Lord of heaven. Let us, oh God, in the middle of all of this around us, let us be preparing ourselves, preparing our hearts, getting ourselves ready. Oh Lord, yes, there will be a day where we come back together again and worship. There will be a day again where people, oh Lord, are able to open up businesses and restaurants and we're able to enjoy those things of life. But God, I believe you've given us a window of time. You've given us a window of grace, a period of grace. And God, you are calling to us and you're trying to get our attention again in this hour. Oh Lord, help us to look up again and look forward to that day to be prepared for that day to get rid of sin and iniquity to be baptized as if we've never been baptized in the name of Jesus to be buried with you and raised in new life a new creation old things passed away behold all things become new God that's what we desire that's why oh God I hope that people listening today desire stir it up in us Will you survive this delay? How you doing right now during the delay? That's all right. Seek Him. That's all right. Let tears run down your face. That's all right. Let God begin to minister to you. Let God begin to show you what love feels like what true love is as He wraps His arms around you right now. I, I, I know, I know, I know this is a little different today. But God's Word is speaking. He's trying to alert us that He, he is coming back. He's trying to remind us He is going to come back. 
But don't, don't, don't get caught up in the delay. Don't become just a casual observer standing by. But get yourself ready. Get your family ready. Hallelujah. God, I pray that you would speak to them right now. Thank you, Jesus, for it. I love you, good people. I want you to be ready. I don't want you to miss it. God doesn't want you to miss it. It's all right. Go ahead and continue to pray if you feel that pull upon your heart. I hope that you do. I hope that you feel what I've been feeling all week. I hope that you feel that tug upon your heart. I hope that you desire heaven and to be with Christ more than anything else. In Jesus' name.